Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're gonna to talk a little bit more about some password managers because there is a change coming up to the popular password manager, LastPass, which causes me to say, abandon LastPass, guys. Now, I haven't dug into a lot of the fundamental underpinnings of this company in the past, so I did take some time to read their privacy policies today, and there's enough in here that concerns me about LastPass that I'm gonna say I'd abandon ship. Now, of course, this comes in the heels of them making an announcement last week that come, I think it's March 15th, but sometime here in March 2021, that LastPass is gonna be changing how some of their uh, access works, and we'll talk about what that is. So before we dive into that too deep, let's first go ahead and have a look over at their website. So over here at LastPass, LastPass.com, and these, this is a company owned by LogMeIn, which if you look into LogMeIn, they really are a company seeking to analyze, aggregate data, and connect people. In other words, yeah, we're kind of utilizing data to do a lot of weird things. And for them to have a password manager site is a little bit disconcerting in a way. But let's go ahead and have a look at their offerings. They have a free account which includes an easy way to cloud store passwords for use across multiple different devices. We have the freemium account, which is $3 a month, which includes one gigabyte of encrypted file storage uh, and multi-device password sharing. We have a family plan allowing up to six premium licenses for password sharing among those groups and organizations. They do have some business plans in there as well. Now, as we dive on in and look at their comparisons, the free and the premium accounts are single users, the family are six users, and you can see that they have your basic things you would assume a password manager would have. Secure password vault, access on all devices, uh, except there's an asterisk there, we'll get back to it. Save and fill auto passwords, password generators, one-to-one uh, -one sharing, one-to-many sharing available in the premium, and then you can see some of the other options that there's a few, few notes down here that are good. They do have multi-factor authentication, which is good uh, as far as uh, not just having a single means of authentication on their free account. That's something some of the other ones I would recommend may not have on their free version. And then you can see that they really don't have much else there. The biggest concern for me is when we go down and have a look at their privacy policy, which you can't see on the screen, but their privacy policy is not a privacy policy directly attached to LastPass. I'm sure there does exist a privacy policy exclusive to the LastPass product. I can't find it if it exists. The privacy statement, there's one over here. There's a security and privacy over here. These are all going to the Log Me In website. So this guy here is the basic Log Me In uh, privacy policy. This one over here filters by a LastPass. So let's go ahead and filter by the LastPass one. So here is all we have if we click on this guy over here. Here's the overview. Here is... LastPass subprocessor, security and privacy operational controls. There's nothing in here specifically about your individual privacy policy. The other one on their website is a very generic one to the log me in privacy policy. There is nothing in here one way or the other about whether or not they have access to the keys to unlock your data vault. And since this is a proprietary program, it is very possible that some rogue company employee could get in there and access all of your passwords and run away with the data. This is a big concern I always talk about here on this channel. Even if the company has the best privacy policy in the history of the universe, one rogue employee could run away with everything if it's not properly secured. And they're not giving me any information about that whatsoever. But what we do read in the top of their policy here, we are Logni in USA Inc., a U.S. headquartered, Boston, uh, headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts, wholly owned. Uh, and our wholly owned subsidies in the United States are listed here. There's we or logged in, privacy policy, blah, 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 blah. And what they're saying down here is what's important in the privacy policy does not apply to other data, such as personal data that may be included in the files, documents, recorded log chats, and all these. But they don't have a separate terms of service for those individual, uh, for those individual things either. What we do find down here, though, if we dig enough, is how is it we use the data we collected from our websites, obviously provide services, address, respond to things. That's all fairly 
fairly common. Uh, but there is a part down here under our data sharing. We share personal data with our affiliate companies and or subsidiaries that are directly or indirectly owned by our parent company. At your discretion with separate uh, with separate specific notices to you or with your consent or see with third party services under the appropriate confidentiality and di data privacy obligations, which really could mean anything. And then in connection with the merger, divesture, acquisition, reorganization, restructuring, financial transaction, or sale of assets pertaining to business lien and required by law enforcement uh, order to administer claims rights or to defend against legal claims. So basically, they have given carte blanche to distribute and share anything and everything. Now, does that include what is in your password manager? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody knows. They're not telling us. And it's a closed source product, so we really don't know. Now, what is changing in their platform, though, that is going to be of significance that's going to cause some people to start looking at other options and thus prompted me looking at this video is this line over here, access to all devices. As of right now, it says PC, phone, tablet, no matter where you need your passwords, the items uh, you add on one device show up automatically wherever you log into LastPass. Plus, you can access your vault when you're offline. Well, not as of uh, a couple of weeks from now, because they are made the announcement that starting March 16th, your free access will only include it on a limited number of uh, device types. So in other words, you can access it on your phone, but not your computer. You can access it on your computer, but not your phone and tablet devices. I think those are lumped in with PCs, but I can't remember for sure. There is something specific on, on that. So uh, this one reports down here, worth pointing out, the free users will still be able to use the software on an unlimited number of devices, but they must be all of the same type. This means you can run LastPass free on several desktops and laptops at the same time, but you won't be able to access from a smartphone or tablet or a smart watch concurrently. And so there we have it. They're making the change, which is going to disable you from being able to access this across multiple devices. So if you create it on your computer, you will no longer be able to access this on your phone without paying the $3 a month fee, which is actually a lot to pay for what you're getting. Think of it this way. For $5 a month, you can get a NextCloud build which can sync your file storage with 80 gigabytes of data, several terabytes of transfer, and manage your passwords. <laughs> okay, $3 a month is expensive for what they have. So if you do have to have a, uh, if you do have to have an online password manager, if you just need that convenience of syncing to everything, Bitwarden is gonna be your best place to go. It pretty much has the similar offerings as LastPass does, but it is open source. And uh, being open source, if we have a look at their privacy policy, you will actually find in their privacy policy that uh, it explicitly mentions that they do not have any access to your vault. Down here, data vault includes all information stored within accounts to the Bitwarden service may include personal information. If we host the Bitwarden service, you can host your own, but if they're hosting the Bitwarden service, we will host the vault data. Vault data is encrypted using secure cryptographic keys under your control. Bitwarden cannot access vault data. That means that no employee at Bitwarden can get in and view and access and share your data. That is something that LastPass does not tell us. We don't know. Maybe they have that policy. Maybe they don't. Maybe they have one backdoor key because, hey, it's going to make things easier to share with law enforcement. A warrant comes up that the police can gain access to everything through a no, no disclosure warrant, a gag order warrant, as it were. But Bitwarden's privacy policy explicitly tells you what you have. And since it is open source, you can see what is in that. They also have a free version. They have the uh, teams and organization. I think those are business. Uh, let me go down to personal plans. Zero, one dollar a month, or if you buy it out in a whole year, it's just $10 for a year, which is an amazing price. 
And then they have the family, which is $333 a month or $40 a year. And looking at what they have, their offerings are very similar. Uh, they're really the only major differences that I can recall is they only have a two-step login on the free version versus the multi-step over here. So that's one of the ones that's a little bit better. They do have one gigabyte of personal data as well, which is encrypted. So if you are looking for a way to store up to one gigabyte of backup files, that is a good way to do it because they can't access anything that is on there. And then they do have the family plan, which again is six and uh, unlimited collections. And then of course we have access to applications. So once you utilize your uh, Bitwarden account, you can actually access this on browsers, computers, applications. And there is an F-Droid app, although the challenge I see with the F-Droid app is it's not something that you can just download from the F-Droid store. You have to install the F-Droid repository on the F-Droid app. I actually don't like doing that. I prefer it's downloadable directly from the store. That's fine. That's not necessarily a deal breaker for me if I wanted to use this option. Now, what I will encourage you to do is take the most overall support, uh, the most overall uh, responsibility for your account and manage things without utilizing these cloud services because cloud services can get you in trouble. The one I personally use is KeePass XC, which I have talked about many times. Now, there are ways to cross sync this. If, for example, you do have a NextCloud account, you can go ahead and put this in a NextCloud, which could be publicly available on the internet. And if somebody hacks in there somehow and grabs your data, they'll be grabbing an encrypted NextCloud data. And then if they manage to get through that, now they have an encrypted uh, password file database to get through. Very encrypted, very good, uh, very good overall for security. But you can also deploy your NextCloud on a local server, which means it will only sync your files and data when you are within your home network. If you do that option, you can create your KeePass database, store it on your NextCloud server, and every time it's updated, it will automatically cross sync to every device that touches your network. And then you can utilize the variety of different apps from the basic application to the browser extensions. And there are a number of open source and some even closed source applications that will be able to manage these across your smartphones as well. So KeePass XC is my personal choice because really we want to make sure that we're not putting our passwords into online vaults simply because if somebody knows that this is a place where online password lists are, they make it a much higher target. So I'm going to encourage you all to abandon LastPass. It is proprietary. We don't know what they're doing. We have no idea if they have access to it. And by extension, we have no idea if their employees have access to that data. And we know that rogue employees nowadays like accessing data and leaking it. So we have access to all that. Leave that if you do need to use the cloud-based services. Go with Bitwarden for the $1 a month, which is a, you know, a third of the price of, of LastPass. You can get all of the same functions and features over there, but that is from a closed source. Also, you can self-host your Bitwarden account if you want to do it on either a Linode server or if you'd like to do it over on a, uh, just on your own local server that will cross sync locally. The uh, downside of that is you're not going to be able to update that on the fly when you're on the network, uh, off the off of your network, but that's actually okay. So overall, the best, though, is going to be key pass offline and take greater responsibility for managing your passwords utilizing that application. So those are my thoughts on this. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, I've mentioned Linode several times here. If you want to use my affiliate code, tlm.li forward slash Linode, you can get $100 in free credit, good for 60 days. You can spin up as many Linodes as you want. Play around with getting a Bitwarden or a NextCloud build in deployed onto your own server. And then at the end of your trial period, decide which ones you want to keep, which ones you don't pay for the services you want to pay for and just get rid of the rest of your Linodes. But that is an excellent way to, you can try out Linode without actually having to get in there and and pay for a whole lot on the front end if you wanna just experiment with what they have. So have a look at that affiliate code and uh, have a look at some of the tutorials on my channel and also on, on their channels to see what you can do with Linode. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.
Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.